Hi, I'm Arthi Shaw, Executive Editor for Provoke Media. So the world of healthcare is changing at such a dizzying pace. I mean, between a raging global pandemic, sort of game-changing developments in health tech and biotech, and innovations around digital health, blockbuster pharma breakthroughs, health equity access and issues, there are so many threads and trends that are coming together in this moment that keeping track of all of it can be daunting. That's the reason behind this series called Healthy Bites. So on each episode, we bring on a healthcare expert to give sort of a quick and digestible what you need to know snippets. Um, so you are updated on all the information and insights in the healthcare space that we need to know about. Um, of course, you know, today healthcare touches every sector and practice area. So hopefully these conversations can be a guide to you no matter what your day-to-day -day role involves. And of course, Real Chemistry is partnering with us on this very important series. So today's episode, um, we have Dan Carter on with us. So Dan is Digital Health and Regional Practice Lead at the East Coast for Real Chemistry. Welcome, Dan. Oh, thanks for having me. So great to be here. Yeah, and so let's just dive right in because these are going to be lightning let's do it. conversations. Um, Great. So let's just level set first around like how would you define digital health? Yeah, and this is a it's a it's a great place to start, and it's it's something that's uh, defined a little differently. Uh, the way we define, I think most of the industry does, is digital health uh, as a d definition can be divided up into two distinct areas. There's kind of digital therapeutics or digital medicine, and right, that's what's used to treat a condition or a disease and almost always requires regulatory approval. Um, and then on the other side, you have health IT, right? You have electronic medical records, the AI platforms, telemedicine, even the healthcare payment systems that sit in the very back end, right? All those things are kind of the health IT piece. And so the two together really is what constitutes digital health. Okay, all right. that's a really important distinction. And so, you know, I'll, I'll throw some stats out, out now because it's been sort of a record shattering year for digital health and VC investment, as well as sort of M&A activity. Um, just some context, according to a re recent story in uh, Fierce Healthcare, global venture capital funding for digital healthcare companies hit 15 billion in the first half of 2021. And this was driven largely by investments in telehealth. So I'm curious if you can um, provide some context around these numbers and, and how you see the space evolving and is telehealth where you're seeing the most growth or what are some of the other areas that our listeners should be aware of? Yeah, it's, you know, it's such, it, it's, it's been an astounding, really since uh, the pandemic started in around March of 2020, you've seen this acceleration, but that number that you quoted, that 15 billion, that already surpassed all of last year, which is just astounding. You know, over 11 IPOs, SPACs, um, the average deal size has gone up to 38 million. It's it's just incredible. And while the bulk of that uh, has been in telehealth, there's also been a lot of M&A activity. Just a couple of weeks ago, Amwell purchased SilverCloud and Conversa. So you are seeing a lot of consolidation. You're seeing a lot of VC money going in. Um, telehealth will continue to be quite a bit of that. There's been, again, $5 billion in the second quarter of this year, according to CB Insights alone, that's been invested just in telehealth. You're going to see that continue to grow. Where you're going to see a lot of these digital health platforms go is very verticalized. So for telemedicine, you're going to be, see it very specific around certain disease states, um, and, you know, whether that's working directly with pharma companies or with a specialist. So I think that's one area is I would say verticality is going to be really important here. The other interesting thing is uh, there's another interesting uh, report that just came out literally last week where there's literally 250 digital health apps launching uh, right now every day. It, it's it's when you think about that, it's so incredible. Uh, some are better than others, but 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 you see this big push towards it. But I think where you're going to see the growth is again telehealth, chronic specialty areas, remote monitoring, huge. Uh, as the pandemic continues to unfortunately wage on and we're in the middle of a variant right now, remote monitoring, anything at home that you could do at home is going to continue to grow. Uh, I think even though coming back to virtual reality, which was sort of a, a bit of a gimmicky thing a few years ago, is really coming more into play around training, um, AI machine learning for rare disease insights, um, e-prescription fulfillment is another area of growth. Um, and then the biggest area of growth that I we really see and and a lot is in mental health. I think mental health is really going to continue on the same trajectory almost as telemedicine. 
All right, before, before we jump to mental health, I'm gonna ask you one follow-up question, 250 apps a day. So I'm sure you all probably get calls every day from, from companies that are wanting to launch. What counsel would you give folks that wanting to how to stand out right now? Yeah, it's a great question. And what I would, the biggest thing is, um, uh, when you're looking for a, a potential agency partner is the number one thing we're going to ask you is we need to get your narrative right. The competition, as you just said, 250 a day, the competition across all of these vertical areas of digital is so fierce that we got to really help. you got to get your story right. you got to stand out. What's your purpose, right? What, what are you doing that's different? How are you advancing care? Uh, those are the things that we actually try to bring to the forefront because then when you're out telling, turning the story more publicly, Right. Those are the types of questions that you as a journalist are going to ask those companies. Right. And and if it's if it's the same old, same old answer, you're not going to stand out. You're going to get buried around the other 249 uh, apps that just came out last week. Right. So I think that that is uh, that's going to be the critical thing is the branding, the story and then go out and then then take your time to get the story right first is, is absolutely critical. Don't rush. Right. It feels a little bit like sort of the cycle that we went through in like 2008, 2009, where every yes. consumer app right on the on the for the iPhone. Um, so, so let, let's let's talk a bit about mental health and telehealth. You know, of course, telemedicine sure. is a huge boon to access and acceptance for mental health. How do you expect this space to evolve? Is, you know, are we going to see, is it going to be hybrid, much like many of the, the office plans that we're seeing moving forward? Yeah, that's been the exciting thing is that what you're saying was mental health is it's really been, it was on, it's on the same trajectory as you saw the, you remember the spike in telehealth at the beginning of the pandemic, like let's say March through, maybe September of last year, it was just, it was like, it was, it was a hockey stick, right? Mm -hmm. Mental health was about three or four months later, you're seeing the same thing. And it's employers want to provide access to their employees. Consumers want access. We all know that, you know, not just the pandemic, but other things going on in our lives, uh, you know, both in our control and out of our control have really put a real um, emphasis on the importance of mental health. And what's been amazing about these technologies that have come out that are a lot of AI based, there's many apps that are out there. It just created this really truly holistic omnipresent ecosystem for mental health that didn't exist before, right? So instead of just going having access once a week, once a month, you now have that connection, that hybrid approach that you talked about, but now you can layer on top of that consistent access through, another, through a technology. And I think consumers and employers are getting very excited about that. We're seeing the adoption uh, go up significantly across the board. So I do think that omnipresence is so, so, so important here. Um, the other thing I will say is data. The data is huge. Uh, that the level of data that's being, that's available now through because of these mental health technology, because of AI and machine learning was quite frankly, a pipe dream in mental health. It, now there's the same level of data that physical care had in the past. And that is really cool. And that's all because of these amazing technologies that are being developed and deployed. Uh, and I think that's a huge game changer for the space. All right, staying true to our, to our time limit, I'm gonna ask you one last question. Um, so beyond mental health, um, what's, the, what's the biggest category for digital health that you see in 2022? And, and how is the consumer adoption going? You know, what areas is there mature adoption and where are you seeing um, hesitancy? Yeah, the, there, there, all the areas I mentioned before, um, digital, all digital therapeutics, home care cannot stress enough. Anything with home attached to it is so significant. Um, but around digital therapeutics, the digital therapeutics are ranging now from substance abuse to ADHD. Mental health is going to continue to skyrocket. Um, all the same pharmacy fulfillment, wearables. We don't want to forget about wearables. Um, all of these are going to see the exponential growth. I think where what's what was traditionally uh, and I was actually surprised is what's traditionally been the barrier is data privacy, right? And, and that's been a real issue, but there was a study that came out by the Pew Charitable Trust uh, last week or the week before, and the survey results found that 81% of adults um, fully support increased access to health information for patients and providers. And that's huge, right? That is so significant. That's a complete change. And I think that was where one area was. And I think that's the thing is that now, I think across the healthcare ecosystem, um, I think whether you're a digital health, pure digital health company, health IT, pharma, biotech, payer provider, truly every company is now a digital health company and that's how it should be defined. Mm -hmm. um, but I say that the biggest barrier um, is, is gonna be access and the inequity in that access, right? This is something that we all need to do better. 
this is going to continue to be the barrier for truly mass adoption of all these amazing digital health platforms. Uh, but I think if we can start to chip away at that, and we are, there's so much great stuff happening in the industry that we're going to see this for 2022. You're just going to see this sky. This, if you think it's skyrocketing now, just wait until you see next year. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And it's, an ex it's such an exciting time to be in the space. I, it's just, it's incredible. The innovation that's happening at the pace that it's happening. It's, it truly is um, a renaissance in my opinion. Yeah, and it seems like we, we may have to do an, a follow-up uh, Healthy Bites on health access and equity as that's such a big conversation. Well, thank you, Dan, and we will be back soon with another episode of Healthy Bites.